raise your hand if you are from New London High School? Okay, good. So, uh, we, uh, how about Fitch High School? Okay, good. So, all the kids there, Ledger High School. We're going to, the, the day is basically going to look like this. Uh, my name is Mike Bernier. I'm the superintendent of schools of Ledger for two more months, and then I'm going to become superintendent of schools for Broughton. Uh, and I'm going to continue with this program. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to uh, basically every every five or six weeks we get together and we're going to we're going to do uh, workshops and hopefully have a positive impact on the on the schools uh, each of the three schools. And and so what I what I would uh, what I wanted to do we were going to start with a, a, a kind of a movement thing, but many of you thanks to our host, where, where's Joe? Joe, uh, Joe, Joe Consolini, I'll, I'll sort of introduce the adults as we go. Joe Consolini is a staff member here working for the National Target Tribal Nation. And they are very generous to us and they allow us to use their wonderful facilities and provide us with the food and, and we really appreciate it. Joe's sort of the coordinator today. Is Renee here? Renee stepped out. She's running here. The, the vice chairman of the Tribal Council Tribal Council that essentially uh, is in charge of the entire National Tribal, tribal Nation. Uh, her name is Councilor Whipple. Uh, some of us know her as Muggsy's mother. Uh, she's I don't know. We have another Whipple who I have not yet met. So I, I need to I need to uh, I need to learn a little bit about, about Scott. But anyway. Yeah. But that, <laughs> perhaps more importantly than Muzzy's and Scott's mother, my daughter's classmate. So my daughter went to went, went to school uh, with her mom. Uh, so anyway, she's going to come here. She was just elected as the vice chairman of the tribal council, so I expect to be respectful to her. Uh, and uh, and she'll come and she'll talk to us because the tribal council feels very strongly about this group. Uh, and, and, and so what I, I, I thought, uh, while, you're, while you're still uh, finishing here, uh, let, me, let me give you just a quick history. How many of you, could you please stand up if this is your first time in More Than Words? <laughs> Whether you're a new ledger guy, or all the Fitch guys are new, and some of the ledger guys, some of the one guys, okay, good, thanks. So let me uh, let me just give you a little bit of history. Because I seem to be the only one. Uh, uh, Mr. Allen will be here shortly. I hope. Uh, Mr. Allen and I have been working together for about 20 years doing uh, diversity stuff. Because many years ago, when I was principal of Waterford High School, and he was the principal of New London High School, not the not the magnet school, but the high school. Uh, we had essentially a race riot at a Waterford High dance, and we were both extremely upset. And, uh, and he and I knew each other, and we had a mutual friend who used to do diversity workshops. And so we got together, and we started to do workshops, and we really, uh, really made some, some good progress uh, in, in that area. And then I, I left uh, Waterford High and ultimately came to Ledger, and in 2000, I think it was in 2008, uh, we had another terrible racial incident. Uh, we had uh, we had some uh, students who were, who were coming here, some, some travel students were on a bus, and some kid was fooling around on the bus. And this other kid got up and sort of whacked him and told him to, to knock it off. And the bus driver misunderstood. This whole thing was a misunderstanding. The bus driver thought the kid was, was, was sort of fighting, and in fact, it, it was actually a, a student just telling uh, somebody to knock it off, but, but sort of popped it in the head and you know, knocked it off. So anyway, the bus driver called the school, came back to the school, called the police, and said, we got some kids on the bus who are really misbehaving, which wasn't, it was a little bit true, but not really true. And as soon as the kids got off the bus, some of the kids had nothing to do with the incident at, at all. Uh, the cops started grabbing them and arresting them. They got extremely upset, as you can imagine. And basically, this led to a confrontation between the 
tribal students and the uh, and, and the police officer. And by the time I got there, uh, it was there. People were extremely angry, and frankly, I thought somebody was going to get shot. Uh, it, it was it was that tough a racial and tough a racial situation as I've ever seen, and I taught in the South Bronx for four years, uh, and I've seen plenty of tough racial situations, but never quite as tough as that. And the chairman, chairman of the tribal council called me, and he was uh, he was irate. He was irate that tribal kids were, were being arrested, and they were being handcuffed. They were being handcuffed and, and, and chained uh, to the walkway at the way their high school. It was a terrible scene. And he started yelling and screaming at me, uh, and I said to him what I just said to you. This was about as bad a racial situation as, as I've ever personally seen in my life. And, and he immediately stopped, knowing that I had a little bit of experience in this area. And he said, we need to make a partnership. We need, we don't need to, as he said, we don't need to put out fires, we need to prevent fires. The next day I got a phone call from Mr. Allen, because there was a, there was a, a sort of a race riot in New London High School. Uh, I, it, I believe it was some Haitian students versus some other African-American students. But nevertheless, it was a big write-up in the paper and it was a big uh, uh, a racial thing. So he called me up and he said, you know, you got your problems in Ledger and we got our problems in New London. I, I think we need to do something again. And we need to get kids, because that's sort of our, hopefully he'll get here and he'll talk a little bit about it. Uh, we need to get kids to, to intervene, because we can't stop the problem. We can't, not alone. Uh, and, and so, first of all, I'm not even in the high school. Uh, I'm, I'm superintendent now. And, and Mr. Allen is not the high school principal of London anymore. But we have 100% confidence in the ability of teenagers to be responsible, to prevent problems when, when they're about to happen, or to respond to problems when they do happen, because problems happen. And we, 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 live, we live in a world, unfortunately, where there are all sorts of interesting problems. Uh, when I, we'll get to introduce ourselves a little bit more later later on. But I can tell you, my daughter married a, a wonderful young man uh, from uh, from Turkey, from Istanbul, uh, and he's Muslim. And, and so when I hear unkind comments about Muslims, uh, it, it sort of bristles with me. Uh, when I was growing up as a kid in New York City, I used to hear unkind comments uh, about Jews all the time. And sometimes hear comments about Hispanic people or, 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 uh, or, or black people. It, it, you know, and every group has this. I, I, don't, I don't mean to shock anyone. Uh, I don't think my family is the only one that uses. Uh, my, my brother, for example, uses very nasty language around me because he knows it makes me angry. And, uh, he just tries to get my coat. Uh, so, what, what, we, what we're going to try to do over the next year put some of these issues on the table and to try to ha have you in your high schools as a big group here, but also in your high schools, and we'll have a little action plan uh, this afternoon, to do something that would, uh, that would that would help us help us address some of these problems. And, and, and I wish uh, there, was a, there was a tribal member uh, who spoke to us uh, last year. Cherokee. Uh, Cherokee. Uh, do you remember what she said? Anyone, uh, I know Cherokee quite well. But when Cherokee was sitting in your seat, uh, we had a, a youth officer at the high school. And uh, I'll never forget this. She was in the cafeteria, and she explained to us that some of her, her tribal cousins uh, were, were, her words, were sort of acting irresponsible. Actually, she used more colorful language than that. Uh, but they were, they were not behaving. And the cop came over and said to, to the table, you know, why don't you guys, why don't you, I don't know what he said. It wasn't disrespectful, but her point was, yes, I'm tribal, but I'm not acting irresponsibly. And she, she brought it to this group, and we said to her, you know, go talk to the cop. And so we got the cop to sit down with the student, and boy, that changed that guy's attitude in a heartbeat. In other words, yes, there are people who behave irresponsibly, but don't paint me with the same brush that you paint everybody else with. That's called stereotype. You don't, we don't want that to happen. 
and, and she would and she would say to uh, to her peers, uh, you know, you, you shouldn't be behaving that way. But we that was a, a kind of a concrete way that we were able to, uh, at least with the youth officer, uh, really make some, some good progress. So where are we with the food? Does anyone need uh, more time? Where's Darnay? Darnay has been at the <laughs> Darnay is my main man. So, so take your food, put it back there, you know the general. Yeah, just, um, 